Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hydrogen ion concentration in plasma remains around 40 nanomoles per liter even though acids are constantly added to plasma due to metabolic processes in tissues. The major acid output is in the form of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is referred to as the volatile acid because it can be easily eliminated by the lungs. There are some other acids which we refer to as fixed acids which cannot be eliminated in the lungs. The lungs as well as the kidney participate in the process of not only buffering the fixed acids but also eliminating the acidity. In this session we will consider what happens when fixed acids are released into blood. How is the blood pH maintained at 7.4 even though fixed acids are added to blood? Let us look at the quantum of fixed acids added to per liter of blood coursing through tissues. We have done this calculation for carbon dioxide earlier. We will do a similar calculation for fixed acids. Per day output is 50 to 100 millimoles and the blood flow through tissues every day is 7200 liters. Therefore, the fixed acid output into every liter of blood would be, let us take 50, 50 millimoles divided by 7200 liters. To make calculations easier, I will make that 49 and say 49,000 micromoles a day divided by approximately 7000 liters a day. That gives us a value of 7 micromoles per liter of fixed acid output. If we consider the range 50 to 100, we will have this going from 7 micromoles per liter to 14 micromoles per liter. Let us take a convenient value for discussions and say that the fixed acid output is about 10 micromoles per liter of blood that courses through tissues. That's what we've been discussing in the last two lectures, carbon dioxide handling in the blood. Fixed acids, what are the fixed acids that we've seen earlier? Sulfuric acid, phosphoric acid, lactic acid. We'll take these three and see how they would ionize. Sulfuric acid will give protons and sulfate anions. Phosphoric acid would give protons and phosphate anions. Lactic acid would give hydrogen ions and lactate. The issue now is how are these free hydrogen ions handled? They have to be buffered or kept in a bound state so that they do not affect pH of blood. They should not add on to the free hydrogen ion concentration of blood which has to be maintained at 40 nanomoles per litre. These hydrogen ions that result due to protonation of the fixed acids are actually bound by the bicarbonate that is already there in plasma. If you remember, I have been alluding to this function of bicarbonate earlier. I have said that that amount of bicarbonate has to be present in blood for a reason and Therefore, a little bit of carbon dioxide has to be allowed to come into arterial blood so as to balance that bicarbonate. And that special function of plasma bicarbonate is to buffer the protons coming from fixed acids. Now let us treat them all together and call them fixed acids yielding protons and the fixed acid anions. These are the sulfates, phosphates and the lactates. 
the protons are buffered by bicarbonate. They bind together and the reverse reaction occurs so as to give carbon dioxide and water. Now you would ask the question, will consumption of bicarbonate by the protons from fixed acids reduce bicarbonate concentration and will the formation of new carbon dioxide increase carbon dioxide concentration. If you remember pH is pK plus log bicarbonate by carbon dioxide concentrations. So the question is will bicarbonate concentration reduce because it is being consumed by the protons of fixed acids and will the carbon dioxide concentration increase. If either or both of these events happen then the pH would reduce. The answer is not really because consider that litter of blood coming into tissues the protons that may actually come from addition of fixed acids is just 10 micromoles. The bicarbonate concentration is more than 1000 times that of the new protons coming in. It is in millimolar concentration. Carbon dioxide is also in millimolar concentration. So any change in the real concentrations is going to be imperceptible very small considering that single litter of blood. Therefore, the ratio per se will not be affected much and therefore the pH will not change perceptibly. This should make you understand that for any buffer pair to function as an effective buffer pair, the base and the acid should be present in adequate concentrations. In this case, the role of bicarbonate is to buffer the fixed acids and the bicarbonate concentration in plasma is more than 1000 times the fixed acids that would enter blood. We can now say that fixed acids are buffered by bicarbonate in plasma. Will it not change the pH at all? For that litter of blood it is okay, but if that blood continue to circulate and if bicarbonate is constantly consumed by the fixed acids, then there will be a reduction in bicarbonate concentration. This does not happen because whatever bicarbonate is consumed by the protons of the fixed acids are replaced by the kidneys. By a mechanism that operates in the distal tubule of the kidney. The distal tubule generates bicarbonate and replaces whatever is consumed by the fixed acid protons and therefore the bicarbonate concentration of plasma does not change. You would notice that the fixed acid protons react with bicarbonate and form carbon dioxide and that carbon dioxide is handled by the red blood cells just like it handles the metabolically generated carbon dioxide. And therefore, hemoglobin has the additional role of buffering the acidity of the protons coming from fixed acids as well. As long as blood reaches the organ of excretion where this carbon dioxide is also blown out. But the lungs alone are not enough because for this process to happen continuously, the kidneys have to keep generating the required bicarbonate. That is why it was said that the fixed acids require two organs for buffering them while they are in blood and then for eliminating them. There are actually three roles that the kidney plays to handle the fixed acids. What are these? One is what we saw just now that the bicarbonate consumed by the fixed acid protons are replaced by the kidney by generation of fresh bicarbonate in the distal tubule. The second important role that the kidney plays is 
elimination of the fixed acid anions. The fixed acid anions, just like all substances in the glomerulus, are freely filtered. They are not reabsorbed and therefore they are eliminated. Why would elimination of fixed acid anions be important for regulation of hydrogen ion concentration in plasma? This is not obvious now, but we will discuss this in a later lecture. Elimination of fixed acid anions is an important function of the kidney whereby it maintains the pH of blood or the free hydrogen ion concentration of blood. The concept of why elimination of fixed acid anions is important for pH regulation will be understood when we discuss the need for maintenance of electroneutrality of plasma and when we discuss the concept of what is called the anion gap. The third role of the kidneys is actually more important in terms of workload and that is to reabsorb the filtered bicarbonate. The design of the kidney is not to extract out the waste alone and eliminate the waste in urine. The way it is designed, all substances in plasma are freely filtered and what is not required by the body is not reabsorbed and is eliminated whereas what is required by the body alone is reabsorbed. Therefore, by all the bicarbonate in plasma will be freely filtered in the glomerulus but the body cannot afford to waste that bicarbonate because it is required for buffering of fixed acids. Bicarbonate is a very important ion and therefore all of it is reabsorbed in the proximal tubule. Bicarbonate reabsorption in the proximal tubule is the third important role that the kidney plays in pH regulation. If it does not reabsorb bicarbonate, there will be bicarbonate wastage in urine, bicarbonate levels will decrease and pH will decrease. We will see later that if bicarbonate levels decrease, the lungs will compensate by reducing carbon dioxide concentration as well. That would be a temporary compensatory mechanism, but ultimately if there is continued loss of bicarbonate in urine, if it is not reabsorbed adequately, it will result in a drop in pH. It is now time to summarize the information that has been discussed thus far. pH of blood is determined by the concentrations of bicarbonate and carbon dioxide. That is the major buffer system in the extracellular fluid. You must revisit the idea of hemoglobin as the most important buffer in the body which takes on the insult of the acidity due to carbon dioxide which is the major acid output into venous blood. Hemoglobin does not create problems and therefore we will not discuss it any further for clinical considerations. The buffer system that can go into pathological states is the bicarbonate carbon dioxide buffer system. That is the major buffer system in the extracellular fluid, hemoglobin being intracellular. The concentration of bicarbonate in blood, in arterial blood is 24 millimoles per liter and this bicarbonate is formed by the kidneys. This bicarbonate is necessary to buffer fixed acids that come from tissues. To prevent alkalinization of blood due to the presence of this bicarbonate, the lungs allow a certain concentration of carbon dioxide to come into arterial blood and the carbon dioxide concentration in arterial blood is such that the ratio of bicarbonate to carbon dioxide will be 20 keeping the pH at 7.4 or the free hydrogen ion concentration at 40 nanomoles per litre. When blood moves across tissues into the veins, these substances will move into venous blood as well. In addition, the tissues release more carbon dioxide into venous blood. This is expected to change the pH of blood because carbon dioxide can 
undergo hydration form carbonic acid which can protonate to yield free hydrogen ions. But we saw that that does not happen in plasma. Most of the carbon dioxide enters red blood cells where this very same reaction that we did not want to happen in plasma because the free protons will be problematic is accelerated within red blood cells due to the presence of carbonic anhydrase. The protons which are formed as a result do not change the acidity of red blood cells as well because they are bound by hemoglobin. This is the entity that we call reduced hemoglobin. Bicarbonate formed during the process also is removed from the cell by the anion exchanger and because both products of this reaction keep getting removed, the reaction can proceed very robustly within RBCs, capturing all the carbon dioxide that is released by tissues. When 3 millimoles per liter carbon dioxide comes into venous blood, an equivalent amount of bicarbonate will be formed. Therefore, the bicarbonate concentration in venous plasma will be more than that in arterial plasma. This is not likely to change the pH as well because some amount of carbon dioxide moves into the dissolved state keeping the venous carbon dioxide concentration at 1.35 millimolar again keeping the ratio between bicarbonate and carbon dioxide at 20, 27 divided by 1.35. So we expect the plasma pH to be maintained even in venous blood. The bicarbonate that was formed by red blood cells during the buffering of carbon dioxide are not available for buffering fixed acids because all that is formed by red blood cells will be reclaimed by red blood cells in the pulmonary circulation so as to reform carbon dioxide and eliminate the carbon dioxide that was formed in the tissues. It is this bicarbonate which came from the kidneys that is available for buffering fixed acids. The fixed acids will also protonate and the hydrogen ions formed from fixed acids do not change this concentration because they combine with bicarbonate to form carbon dioxide, a little carbon dioxide which can be easily handled by the red blood cells. They already handle carbon dioxide coming in such excess due to metabolic processes. So whatever comes out of fixed acids is a minuscule amount for red blood cells to handle. So we can think that fixed acids have transferred their acidity to carbon dioxide and that is again buffered by hemoglobin. Addition of fixed acids to venous blood and consequent consumption of bicarbonate will not immediately result in any significant change in the bicarbonate concentration in plasma because what is added is in the micromolar range and the bicarbonate as well as carbon dioxide concentrations are in the millimolar range. However, continued consumption of bicarbonate without replacement as blood circulates through tissues will result in a reduction of bicarbonate. Therefore, whatever has been consumed by the fixed acid protons will have to be replaced and that replacement comes from the kidneys. Kidneys have three important roles in regulating the free hydrogen ion concentration of plasma. One is what we just saw, replacement of bicarbonate that has been consumed by protons of the fixed acids. The second role is elimination of the fixed acid anions in urine and a third role is reabsorption of filtered bicarbonate. We have now seen the major mechanisms involved in pH regulation in plasma. In the next few sessions, we will move on to discussing the specific roles of the kidney. The mechanisms involved in bicarbonate generation in the distal tubule to replace the consumed bicarbonate, 
mechanisms in the proximal tubule whereby reabsorption of filtered bicarbonate occurs and mechanisms by which elimination of fixed acid anions is an important phenomenon for maintaining pH balance. These are the issues we will discuss in the next few lectures. Thank you for watching.